Welcome back to Terpy Eyes. I'm Ryan, and this video is sponsored by Mars Hydro. They provided the discount code Terpy Eyes that can be used on their website for any of the products they offer. This video is a complete seed to harvest video of the Gorilla Cookie Perp series we just completed on the channel. So if you followed along with the episode videos, thank you for checking those out. This is a condensed version of the entire series in one video for the people who only like seed to harvest videos. We start off this grow by getting our grow equipment together, which is provided by Mars Hydro and consists of a 2x4 grow tent, a SP3000 LED grow light, a 6 inch inline fan with the thermostat controller and a 6 inch carbon air filter. We also added a Pulse One environmental monitor to allow us to data log the environmental conditions which we can view from both our phone and computer when needed from anywhere we might be when we're away from the grow tent. If you want to check out this grow in time lapse form, I'll be sure to link it in the video description below along with it being the video before this one on the channel. Assembling the 2x4 grow tent is pretty straightforward as it is a smaller space. If you're looking to get started growing, this overall setup is priced fairly for what it is and gets you enough space to get started growing at home. We start off by getting our seeds ready by placing them straight into water. These are freebie seeds from Sunken Treasure Seeds and our Gorilla Cookie Perp regular seeds. We let the seeds soak for 24 hours in our dark, cool location. I've found any seeds that sink straight to the bottom of the water as soon as we put them in water are usually no good. Personally, I like to leave them floating at the top of the water instead of forcing them down to sink to the bottom like I see many other people do. These seeds are a few years old and were not properly stored over that time, so I'm not surprised to see a few of them that did not make it above the growing medium. We're using Promix HP as a growing medium in 3.5 inch by 3.5 inch thin wall pods. The Mars Hydro SP3000 LED light was turned up to 25% power at 39 inches away from the tops of the pods, which gave us 150 ppfd for the first 5 days of growth. We then turned the light up to 60% power at day 6, which gave us 250 ppfd of light at pot level. We can see that the plants are far from healthy at this point, along with a bunch of them looking like they have mutations which could have been caused for a variety of different reasons. Nonetheless, we are at day 18 from dropping the seeds in the pods and we are narrowing down the numbers to the strongest plants and transplanting them into one gallon pods. Up until this point, all the plants we're getting were Clonex clone solution. Being that this tent is a 2x4 size, we really didn't need all these seedlings anyways, even if we ended up with all of them being healthy. I did have a feeling it was going to be a low germination rate due to them being stored terribly. So that's why I chose to start all of them, plus we still need to remove any male plants that we find. With that being said, we chose the 6 best plants to transplant into 1 gallon pots, and we continued to use the Promex HP as the growing medium. It's not hard to miss the two grow tents in the background, which will be the next two grow series on the channel after we complete this six video series. We're growing truffle breath and meet the afghan. With the six plants transplanted, we need to water them so the entire container of growing medium is watered evenly. We are giving the plants their first dose of actual nutrients at this time. I just don't want to mention the brand because the plants do stay unhealthy for a large portion of the vegetative stage. Being that this is a new location to me and the water supply is well watered, it presented me with some challenges as the old owners of the house had zero food 
filtration system set up, along with the water being undrinkable, in my opinion. While I waited for the water testing to come back, along with a suitable filtration system to be installed, we continued to use the well water, which definitely handicapped these plants for quite some time at this spot while I figured things out. After getting the test results back of the water, it turns out the water had super high amounts of iron in it, along with a small amount of methane gas, which about halfway through this grow, I had a system installed to fix the water, and almost instantly the plants were covered well, which I'll be sure to say later on when that actually happened. We are now at day 25, and I like to do our first topping anywhere between day 21 and day 25, so we'll also go a little heavy on the defoliation of the plants by removing the large fan leaves. The plants will look a little odd after stripping them of this much leaf material, as they are pretty small, but because of the damaged leaves, I like to get rid of all of it sooner the better. I know there will be people in the comments saying how to do this differently, or I don't know what I'm doing, or some other reason. I'm just showing what I'm doing, given my situation and showing the results from doing it this way. So hopefully if somebody is in the same situation, they can see what happens when it's done this specific way and the results from it. Don't forget, if you're enjoying the video so far or have found it at all helpful, to hit that like button. It really goes a long way in supporting the channel and helping us grow. With the leaf stripping and topping completed, we can give the plants a watering as they did seem pretty light in weight while working on them. So I confirm which plants were the lightest so we can adjust the amount of water to give each of the plants accordingly. We gave each of the plants an average of 700 milliliters of nutrient mix and turned the light up to 100% power which gave us about 350 ppfd at the tops of the plants where the light was 48 inches away. Currently our temperature is at 80 degrees Fahrenheit and our relative humidity at 40%. The humidity is pretty low definitely contributing to the slow unhealthy growth of the plants. The plants have been on 24 hours of light up until this point, since I didn't have any timers set up, so the plants were definitely getting blasted by too much light, giving us a very high DLI reading. The plants are appearing to be overwatered at this point by the form of the leaves drooping down, but I assure you the pots have pretty much fully dried out between waterings, almost to the point where that they are actually underwatered. With that being said, the drooping leaves are actually being caused from the stress of too much light from a high DLI reading. We finally got the light timer set up, and switch the lights to 18 hours on and 6 hours off at day 34 from seed. They are still battling the poor water quality I've been giving them, but we are working with what we have right now with trying to get the new house situated so we can feel comfortable and living in it. We could have dimmed the light a little bit more to improve the health of the plants at this point combined with the light cycle change would have definitely made a much bigger improvement towards the health of the plants. The six Gorilla Cookie Purps plants get bigger, the relative humidity inside the tent also starts to rise, which is also helping to achieve a more ideal vapor pressure deficit. Currently we now have the temperature at 75 degrees Fahrenheit with a 60% relative humidity while the lights are on. Being that my grow tents serve as small pheno hunts to hopefully find a keeper, we need to take clones of each of the plants just in case one of them turn into a special plant. We start off by soaking our Rockwell cubes in Clonex clone solution at a ratio of 6 milliliters per liter of water. Then we label both the Rockwell cube and each of the plants so that they match each other. We move on to taking a cutting off the plant and trimming off the node sites so we have an approximately 6 to 8 inch cutting and we dip it the end of the cutting into Clonex clone gel and place the cutting into the Rockwell cube making sure there is at least one node site inside the rock wall because the node site will be the first location for new roots to form. After taking our clones off the plants we do a light cleanup of the plants to remove any large fan leaves as well as any small lower growth that won't turn into anything later on in the grow. If you're new to cloning I would recommend taking several clones of each of the plants to ensure that at least one of the clones will root for you. The plants were getting a little overgrown for this size of pot, and with me being away quite a bit, the pots were drying out pretty often, as I did not set up an automated irrigation system for this grow.
since these plants are from regular seeds, we still need to identify and remove any male plants before we flip the lights into the flower cycle. We are looking for white hairs to show, which will identify the plant to be female. If we see a pollen sac, then the plant would be a male. The sex of a plant will show anywhere between week 4 and week 7, depending on the strain. We could also do a sex test from Farmer Freeman, which would show the sex of the plant as early as the first week of growth. If you've never tried sex testing before from a lab, you could use the discount code TERPIEHIES on Farmer Freeman's website. I'll go into more detail about that process in a future growth series. We did identify one plant to be a male, so we would remove that plant from the tent and kill it off since we didn't have any use for it. Our clones we took of each of the plants are now rooted and are ready to be transplanted into their starter pods, where we'll keep them under very low light and very light nutrients to keep the growth to a minimum and as slow as possible. Each of the clones represents one of the plants inside the tent. That way, if we find a keeper pheno, we can use it again in the future. This is a very temporary clone setup located in the corner of my staircase, using the poles of a 2x4 grow tent and a pair of T5 lights, which provide the new clones with approximately 90 ppfd of light at the tops of the pots. With the male plants removed from the tent and the remaining five plants confirmed to be female, we can transplant them into the three gallon pots, which will be their final home for the remainder of the grow. We are sticking with Promex HP as the growing medium. While I was transplanting, I noticed the plant's root ball to start circling the bottom of the pots, which is a sign of being root bound or the early stages. So to let the roots know that they have more space to grow now, I gently tear the roots at the bottom before placing it into the three gallon pot. To fill the remaining space in the pots, I make sure to compact the new growing medium to be firm which will give the plant support while growing into the larger pot along with not having the growing medium lower down after the first watering. We finally got the water filtration system installed into the house which will definitely help out the plants going forward but still waiting on installing a reverse osmosis system which will probably be done for the next round of grow tents in this place. Pretty much at the same time as getting the filtration system done for the waterer, I teamed up with Front Row Egg Nutrients for the next few grow tent series on the channel. If you're currently using Front Row Egg Nutrients, be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're interested in trying out the Front Row Egg Nutrients, be sure to use the discount code TERPIEYES on their website to receive 40% off your entire order for any of the products they offer. After giving each of the Gorilla Cookie Perp plants 2 liters of water with the nutrient mix, we cleaned up the area from completely leading the transplanting by vacuum the entire tent space. These plants could definitely be flipped into flower at this point, but because we wanted to keep all the grow tents on the same schedule, we decided not to flip this tent for about one week longer. It's been 20 days since taking the cuttings off of the plants, which have now turned into healthy small plants themselves. Being that this temporary setup is an open space, I've kept the T5 lights on for 24 hours until it can open up some space inside of a grow tent. Since the light strength is so low, it is not causing any issues for the plants with the light being on for 24 hours. Before we flip these plants into flower, we need to clean up the lower sections of each of the plants by lollipopping them. By removing all of the lower node sites below the top three nodes, it drastically increases the amount of quality larger buds we harvest at the end of this grow. For this grow, I was a little conservative and kept the top four or five node sites. With the grow now completed, I definitely go more aggressive in the future for the strain and only keep the top two or three node sites. The plants started to look much better as we got off the older lower growth that was pretty bad from both the poor water quality along with underwatering them several times. During lights on for this stage of growth we had our temperature at 75 degrees Fahrenheit and our relative humidity at 68% giving us a pretty low VPD reading which is more ideal for the clone stage vegetative rather than late veg like we currently are in. To resolve the low VPD we would need to raise the temperature to at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit 
for a more ideal environment for late vegetative stage. The tent is pretty full at this point, so it's time to flip the five Gorilla Cookie Perp plants into flower by changing the light cycle to 12 hours on and 12 hours off. With the reduced amount of time the light is on means that we can turn the Mars Hydro SP3000 LED light up to 100% power. The distance between the top of the plants and the light is 30 inches, which gives us about a 700 ppfd at canopy level. We can see some deficiencies starting to show on the large fan leaves. This is because I wasn't giving the plants enough water to achieve our 20% runoff that is recommended. When there isn't enough runoff from watering, the EC level rises in the growing medium, along with affecting the pH levels. Since I don't have a soil tester at this location, the best way to figure out what's the issue and what's going on inside the growing medium would be to water the plants and collect the runoff to take a pH and EC reading with our pens. At this point in the growth, the growing medium ended up being a 9.7 EC reading, which is super high. Ideally, for the front row egg nutrients, we would want to see our growing medium in the range of 2.3 and 3.0 EC. In the next episode, we'll do a heavy watering to lower the EC levels inside the growing medium, along with raising the pH levels since it's currently at a 5.4 pH. We are now at day 24 of flower, so to open up some space inside the tent and to allow for better airflow to all the areas, we are going to remove all the large fan leaves from the plants. This will also allow for more light to reach the middle areas of the plant, which helps with keeping any bug issues to a minimum or non-existent. If you're wanting to follow along with weekly videos of all my grows going on, check out the Patreon page where I post a video each week covering all the grows and answering any questions you might have along with doing a monthly giveaway for the members. After completing the defoliation, we decided to remove the weakest plant from the tent to open up some much needed space for the remaining four plants. After doing a complete defoliation of the plants and removing the smallest plant to make space for the remaining four plants, they seem to perk right back up and are on a good path to remain healthy for the remainder of the grow. But we needed to confirm our pH and EC levels in the growing medium to make sure we won't have any issues going forward. When we removed the large fan leaves, a bunch of them were damaged and showed signs of deficiencies. So we needed to check our runoff while we watered our plants. Because I don't have a drip tray under each of the plants, I just remove one of the plants out of the tent and use a plastic bucket to collect the runoff. While we wait for our nutrient mix to make it through the growing medium, I go ahead and water each of the other plants. Any runoff that might happen inside the tent is easily removed with a wet vacuum. There are soil meters on the market that can measure the growing medium, but this is the cheapest way for any home grower to get an idea of what's going on inside the growing medium. We got a reading of 7.3 EC and a pH of 5.7 which tells us that we have stacked our EC level far too high which is locking out any nutrients for the plants to take up. To resolve this we are giving the plants straight water the next time we need to water the plant to bring our EC levels down. If we were to run water through the plants at this point we would run the risk of overwatering or starting root rot. Keep a close eye on the plant plant at the top of the screen and notice it dried back far too much which caused heavy burning on the leaves. With such a high EC already in the growing medium while being wet, it actually increased as the moisture content dried back. I was away for a couple days and because that specific plant is super vigorous, it drinks a lot more water than the others and I wasn't able to make it back in time before it went dry. The other plants did dry back more than I would have liked but didn't result in as much damage as that specific plant. It's definitely a big disappointment to have damage happen on the plants as we are approaching late flower stage. But shit's gonna happen while trying to balance different things in life and keep everything going at the same time. For the next couple waterings, I'm giving the plants straight water pH to 6.3 with no nutrients in it to hopefully bring down the EC level and raise the pH level a tiny bit. If we look past the damaged leaves, we can see that the Gorilla Cookie Perp strain does have pretty nice buds and trichome development to them. So we will have to run a couple of these phenos again in the future where we don't burn them. So we can 
can see just how they turn out in a better situation and hopefully we can find a keeper. We started giving the plant straight water for the final 7 days of flower to make sure we allow for the plant to use up any built up nutrients remaining in the growing medium. Unfortunately the grow tent next to this tent was the only location that remained with mites that had been battling for months and I made a mistake at some point touching that other plant in the other tent and coming over to this tent and working on them which brought over a few mites thankfully they didn't get out of control for this grow. We have finally reached harvest at day 58 of flower for this grow. Definitely far from an impressive run, but I'm very excited to show you the next series on the channel of my truffle breath grow. So for this grow, we're going to be using bags from Grove Bags. This clear bag is meant for fresh frozen harvest or for the freezer, which we'll be using for this harvest. Grove Bags also offers many different types and sizes of bags for dried buds to both cure and store your finished flower in. Highly recommend using these over the typical glass jars many other people use. We'll be going over the drying, trimming, and curing process in the next series since we have kept the truffle breath grow as dried flower. For this grow, we're going to be doing fresh frozen. The dried flower bags keep the flower between 58 and 62% relative humidity, which is the most ideal range to preserve the freshness of the dried flower. We are using the fresh frozen small bag for this harvest. Since we're going to be using these plants for making a topical skin cream in the future, this is the easiest and most effective way I've found to process the plants for the purposes of making the topical cream. Because there is so much damage on the leaves, I'm giving the buds a quick trim to remove any dry and crusty leaves which serve no process for the remaining processes we are going to be doing on these plants. Under all the dried crusty yellow leaves, the buns aren't as bad as I was expecting. So I'm confident in running a couple of these phenos in a run in the future to see the results we get. Overall, I have to say I'm very happy with the results from the front row egg nutrients during this first run of plants. It didn't shine in this specific tent, but the other tents I had going at the same time as this one really performed amazing as I did not have as many issues in those spots compared to this tent. I'll be sure to make a video in the near future of turning this harvest into some type of topical skin cream so we can all see that process. If you're new to the channel, I upload videos every week covering indoor and outdoor grows, solventless extractions, products and equipment, while showing how to work through different situations along the way. So if that's what you're into, hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out when I post new content. We are only 2,000 subscribers away from our 100,000 subscriber goal by the end of the year, which will be very tight to make. Your help would be greatly appreciated if we can reach that goal if you're not subscribed. And remember to get out there and make it happen. Happy growing everyone.